Hello, welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd, and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got some major breaking news coming out from Ukraine to share with you, but we're actually going to be talking about Germany. I've got this huge report that came out in the last 30 minutes that uh, Germany has stopped all military aid for Ukraine to reduce government spending. Okay, the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz ordered this uh, to to stop any further aid going to Ukraine right now. Everything will be frozen. So any contracts that are currently uh, that were approved previously by the German government will be fulfilled. But any new contracts or any new assistance that is given to Ukraine in the future, at least for right now, is going to be declined. Okay, so this is very, very big news because Germany is a major backer for Ukraine. They are the number one European nation that is supplying weapons and armory for uh, Ukraine to fight this war, okay? They're the ones sending all these leopard tanks over there and uh, lots of ammunition, everything, okay? Aside from the U.S., they are the, the second in line for supporting the Ukraine war. So this is going to put heavy pressure on the United States and also many other European nations that don't have the budgets to support this war in Ukraine. So this is absolutely huge, okay? I want to show you a few things here today. Take a look at this from Jurgen Nodet. Germany stops military aid for Ukraine, says the Build publication. Chancellor Scholz, with the support of Finance Minister Lindner, ordered that any further aid for Ukraine be frozen. Current contracts are being fulfilled, but new requests for aid, especially from the Ministry of Defense, are not being approved. This is not entirely correct, as continued financing is to come largely from frozen Russian funds. We also know Olaf Scholz and his many lies in connection with this war. It shows that Olaf Scholz... Uh, his promises to support Ukraine for as long as it takes may have been a lie again. Let's hope for the best. So yeah, this is huge because not too long ago, uh, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz was saying that they would they would stick with Ukraine to the very end, and this is clearly not the case anymore. I understand they're having budgeting concerns and and uh, they need to reduce spending. I mean, I, I would agree that many countries, including the United States, need to reduce government spending. There is inflation out of control in the entire world. Uh, you know, does this war need to continue? It's obviously a controversial thing. Many people believe that it needs to continue and Russia needs to be defeated. And then there's another side of the world that believes that, you know, we don't need to have war. This war needs to come to an end. This war is worthless. It should not be going on. So there's obviously a lot of people on either side that, you know, feel differently in regards to the situation. But uh, definitely, this is going to be a major issue for Ukraine moving forward as they're not going to be getting funding anymore. So, you know, I've even got this pulled up here on Politico. Germany to halt new Ukraine military aid, says report. The ban, which is already in place, will affect all new requests for assistance to, to Kiev, Germany's FAS newspaper reported. So we'll go over this briefly. It's just a quick report. Came out today, uh, August 17, 2024. The German government will stop new military aid to Ukraine as part of the ruling coalition's plan to reduce spending. The Frankfurter... Aljamain Zeitung Faz reported on Saturday. Moratorium on new assistance is already in effect and will affect new requests for funding, not previously approved aid, according to the Faz report, which cited uh, non public documents and emails as well as discussions with people familiar on the matter. In a letter sent to German Defense Ministry on August 5th, Finance Minister Christian Lindner said that future funding would no longer come from Germany's federal budget but from proceeds from frozen Russian assets, according to the German newspaper. Okay, so there will be still funding coming from these frozen frozen uh, Russian assets, excuse me, but there's still some hurdles behind that. Take a look at this. Germany and G7 countries in June struck a preliminary deal to use the value of some $300 billion of Russia's sovereign assets and mobilize in Western financial institutions to secure a $50 billion loan to Ukraine, but... Governments have yet to agree on the details of the, of the scheme, and technical talks might drag on for months, okay? So not necessarily is all this money that's being held by frozen Russian assets sitting in European banks uh, going to completely fund this war in Ukraine. Obviously, that's why Germany's government's been funding this as well, and many governments are doing this, even the United States, obviously, right? So this is definitely going to hamper Ukraine's ability to continue this war, um, and uh, I don't know, is the U.S. going to step up more? Wouldn't surprise me, especially if Kamala Harris ends up winning the election in November. Uh, she seems to be very supportive of the war in Ukraine, so it wouldn't surprise me 
that if she ends up winning, the U.S. would maybe even amplify their efforts to support Ukraine, also considering they're launching a major incursion into Russia right now. This is obviously... Uh, it benefits many countries around the world that Ukraine is launching this, uh, this offensive. This also continues this war and will help many countries produce more money uh, with the defense contractors and uh, companies that are supporting this war. This will make and generate lots and lots of income for countries. Uh, so let's keep moving here. Berlin, which is Europe's main supplier of military aid to Kiev, had already signaled a change in course on Ukraine, Ukraine last month. Uh, while the governing coalition of social Democrats, Democrats, the Greens, and the Liberals adopted a preliminary deal on a draft budget for 2025, the compromise seen by Politico details plans to slash further assistance to Ukraine by half to 4 billion euros to fulfill other spending priorities. Speaking of, after the cabinet approved the draft budget in mid-July, Lindner said Ukraine would have to rely more on funds from European sources as well as the frozen Russian assets but it's still, uh, it's still unclear if and when that money will flow. Contentions over Ukraine aid reportedly deepen the rifts in the ruling coalition in Berlin, already tattered by weeks of internal fights over a series of issues from budget to welfare. Green leader and economy minister Robert uh, Habeck, or Habeck uh, said this week he plans to run for chancellor as the Greens candidate in the 2025 federal election, casting doubt on the survival of the governing alliance of which he is a member. It's quite obvious that this coalition has major problems finding common ground, Habeck said, regarding the recent disputes, the ideas of falling apart. So obviously major political issues going on in Germany as well, right? Uh, but in regards to funding Ukraine, obviously, if, if a country doesn't have the money, if the budget, budgeting is just simply not there, how can they continue to fund this war in Ukraine? So looks like the funding, at least temporarily, is going to get cut off from Germany. And this is absolutely huge news. Okay, so I pulled this up as well. We're going to take a look at a chart here that I have uh, to show for you. This came out in February of 2024. It says countries that have committed the most aid to Ukraine. So there's a little chart down here that shows all the aid to Ukraine by the different countries that are supporting them. United States, obviously one of the biggest uh Backers here of Ukraine, 75.4 billion as of February of this year, supported to Ukraine, okay, directly from the United States government, okay, 75 billion. And then see, obviously, Germany is second in line here, 24.2 billion in total bilateral commitments. And then uh, share of EU commitments is 20 billion, okay. So, all in all, about uh, what, 45 or so billion in commitments to Ukraine that is no longer going to be going to. Uh, to their to their support and fight for this war against Russia, okay, and then obviously following up France at 17 billion, uh, roughly about almost 20 billion, 19 billion or so in support. Uh, United Kingdom 17 billion, and Netherlands uh, right around what maybe 14 billion, something like that, 15 billion. So uh, this is going to be a major problem for Ukraine, okay, considering that a major portion of their Funding and, and support to continue fighting this war, all this weaponry that uh, Germany is sending them, all these leopard tanks and everything, at least in the meantime, is going to get cut off and they're not going to be receiving this. So you guys let me know uh, what you think down below. Is this going to affect the war in Ukraine? Um, do you guys think this will, this will put a stop to the war at some point? Or do you think other countries will just start to step up? Do you think the U.S. will step up and take over um, along with maybe more European nations? Will this maybe put more pressure on other European nations to step up and support them. What's going to happen? Because now that Ukraine pushed into Russian territory, I mean, this is a solidified war at this point. If uh, this war does not lead to a major uh, ceasefire agreement between Russia and Ukraine, and then maybe Ukraine with this Kursk offensive, they use that as their uh, advantage and leverage to gain back more territory that's been lost on the eastern side of their country, or maybe Crimea, who knows? Uh, we'll see what happens with that. If that doesn't help them out in that way, this war is going to continue and only get worse, in my opinion, and potentially lead us closer to an inevitable conflict with NATO. And hopefully that is not ever the case, but it's obviously very possible. I think all options are on the table at this time. But let me know what you think down below. I'm curious to know what you're thinking. Share your thoughts, concerns, and opinions down in the comment section. That's going to be it for this update. If you got something out of this, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you. And with that, hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.